So, you're looking to try out Linux. You can see why. Windows is slowly becoming unreliable thanks to Microsoft adding unnecessary features and bloatware, and Linux is constantly seeing to improve compatibility with the help of big companies such as Valve working out proper support for many Steam games using programs such as Proton. These days, it's a viable option to use on a daily basis, so I can see why you wanted to try it out. Before we get started, though, what benefits actually are there of installing Linux? A lot of people prefer Linux because it's less expensive performance-wise, oftentimes using a lot less memory and CPU than Windows does. This frees up room for apps to run a lot smoother, and to use easier multitasking, and much more. Linux also tends to have a lot more customizability and settings for you to change, unlike Windows does. One big issue with Linux, however, is that it has lesser support for applications than Windows does. This is because Windows is much more commonly used than Linux, so most companies will go directly to Windows for adding new programs instead of porting them over to Linux. While many companies don't think it's worth it to provide support for Linux due to having a much smaller user base, some companies choose to support Linux anyway. For example, Steam with Proton allowing you to run Windows games on Steam for Linux. There are also smaller communities constantly working to provide support for programs that aren't originally made for Linux, such as Vinegar HQ with their port of Roblox for Linux called Sober. I think by now we've spoken enough about application support. Let's get to actually installing Linux. To get started with installing Linux, you need to choose a Linux distro. There's a lot of options, but for the sake of keeping this video somewhat concise, I'm going to be sticking to two options that I know very well, Ubuntu and Linux Mint. These two are fairly similar, with one literally being based on the other, but there are quite a few differences between the two. First of all, Linux Mint doesn't have Snap. Snap is one of many methods on Linux of installing programs, but a lot of people see it as really inefficient for several reasons, because applications installed via Snap tend to be really memory and storage heavy as opposed to other options. Ubuntu has Snap and some of the apps that come pre-installed even use Snap, which can cause worse, com worse performance compared to Mint. Another big difference between Ubuntu and Mint is the desktop environment. This is basically your home screen, where you launch your apps and navigate your computer. Ubuntu uses GNOME. It is not pronounced GNOME, it is pronounced GNOME. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Anyway, GNOME is a very sleek and comfortably designed desktop environment. It's got very nice rounded corners, it's got really smooth animations, but it is heavy on performance because of that. Mint, however, uses Cinnamon, which is a bit more lightweight, but doesn't look quite the same as GNOME does. It's a lot more simple, and doesn't have just the same aesthetics in mind. It just mostly consists of the basics. One thing to keep in mind is that you usually have the option to switch your desktop environment or install a completely different one from the get-go. For example, if you install Lubuntu or Linux Mint XFCE, you will get LXQT or XFCE, respectively. If you're on a particularly low-end computer, sometimes it is preferable to go with a different desktop environment for performance sake. Usually, if I need to do so, I would go with Lubuntu because Lubuntu is one of the most lightweight Linux distributions available, while still keeping all the benefits of a well-supported distro, that being Ubuntu. Linux Mint also has alternative desktop environments available straight from the download page, but Cinnamon is usually your best option no matter what. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Linux Mint with Cinnamon. It's very user-friendly, featuring an easy-to-understand interface and installation process, and is also fairly lightweight, so it's best for anyone looking to squeeze some more performance into a low-end machine. I'm going to be doing exactly that, in fact. Your first step in installing Linux is to pick a computer to install Linux on. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using an old laptop I've had lying around for a while. It was made in about 2019, but it has god-awful performance, it can barely run Windows, but it can run Linux well, so that's why I'm going to be installing Linux on it. Your second step is going to be to grab a USB stick to put your Linux installer on. Make sure it's one that you're fine with erasing all of the files off of, because you need to fully wipe it to create the installation media. It also needs to be a minimum of about 4 gigabytes, but larger is perfectly fine. For example, mine's going to be 64 gigabytes. It's way overkill, but I couldn't find any other USB sticks that were of the correct storage amount. If you don't have any empty USB sticks, feel free to back up the files off of an existing USB stick before using it for this tutorial. Your next step is to actually download your distro of choice. 
for Mint, which is going to be our tutorials of this show. You can find the download link on screen here, or in the video description if I choose to upload this to YouTube. While there are a few different options for desktop environments on Mint, Cinnamon is the best option for balancing usability with performance, as I mentioned earlier, so I'll be using that. Setup isn't much different between desktop environments, however, so feel free to pick what fits your needs. You can either torrent it, which is a bit faster but less streamlined as you need dedicated torrenting software, or use one of the various download mirrors you can find a bit further down the page. It's likely this download will take a while anyway, because it is a few gigabytes, so feel free to do something else while you wait. Once the disk image is finished downloading, you need to find software to put it onto your USB stick. If you're on Windows, your best bet here is to download Rufus. You can find it on this link on screen, or once again, look down in the description. And you're best off downloading the portable version. Your next step is to load up Rufus. You might want to move it to its own dedicated folder before starting it up, if you haven't already, as it does create a few configuration files in the same folder where it's stored, and you don't want that extra junk filling up your downloads. Once Rufus is open, you should see a screen that looks like this. You're going to want to click the Select button next to this drop down that says Disk or ISO Image. From here, it'll open up a file explorer and ask you to select a file. You're going to want to select your Mint Disk image from here, so navigate to wherever you saved it earlier, your, most likely your downloads folder. After this is done, a lot of information is going to get filled in a bit lower down on screen. All of this is fine to ignore, nothing needs to be adjusted, all you have to do is hit Start. Rufus will warn you about wiping your data, which we've already mentioned earlier. I hope you backed up your files, because your USB drive is going to get fully wiped. I repeat, fully wiped. So, once you're ready, click continue to move on. And now, the Mint installer is loading onto your USB stick. Remember how downloading Mint took a while? Yeah, this is probably going to take longer. You know what time it is. You hear that? That means that your installer is finally done flashing onto your USB stick. Now, you're going to want to put this USB stick into whichever computer you plan to install Linux on, or if you plan to put it, in, put it on the computer you just used to put the installer on the stick, just reboot that computer, and reboot. You need to launch your computer into the boot selector, which uses different keys on different devices. Here's a list of a few common ones if you aren't sure. Once you've gotten yourself into the boot selector, you can pick out your USB stick. It'll usually show up by the brand name, but it might not, so just pick whatever, whichever one looks like your USB stick. And once you do this, your installer should start to boot up. This process will be different by Linux distro, but they tend to be fairly similar, especially between Ubuntu and Mint, so I'll be continuing on with Mint. If Mint isn't your distro of choice, feel free to look up the instructions for your installation process online, you should find some easy way to get it set up. When you first boot into Linux Mint, it won't immediately load up the installer. Instead, you'll be placed directly onto the desktop. From there, you're free to poke around, see if you like how it all works, get used to the layout, etc. You should connect to the internet while you're here since, you, since it's important for the installer process, so you can do that by clicking on the network icon near the bottom right of your screen. You then start the installer whenever you're ready. The first thing the installer will ask you to do is select a language. As shocking as it may be, I do speak English, so I won't be changing the setting there. Next up, it'll ask for your keyboard layout. Most likely, you won't need to change this since the vast majority of computers use your generic US keyboard layout with QWERTY, but if you do use a different keyboard layout, feel free to find it from the list. Next up, it'll ask you if you want to install multimedia codecs. These are just ways of playing more unique video files and such. You should probably enable these, but if you're really, really low on storage or performance, you may choose to skip these. For my install, I'm going to be enabling them anyway. Next up, it'll ask you where you want to install Linux. There's usually three options listed. The first option is to dual boot, as in be able to launch two different operating systems simultaneously, say Windows on one half and Mint on the other half. While the second is to entirely erase your disk, and the third is to do custom partitions. Custom Partitions is a much more advanced option, and you should only use it if you really know what you're doing. I'll be fully wiping my disk because I have nothing else important on it right now. Next, it will request the location of your time zone. 
Usually, if you're already connected to the internet by now, it will automatically detect this information, but it might not if you don't connect to the internet or maybe your internet has some sort of messed up location on it, so adjust this if need be. The final screen of the installer will ask you for your name, a name for your computer, a username, and a password. You can fill all of this in as you wish, just make sure to, to choose a memorable password, because having access to your password is very important in Linux. And then, once you hit continue, Linux Mint is on its way to install. Just give it some time, and uh, yeah, just do whatever while you wait. You know what time it is, we're gonna do the thing again. Pinball- Once you see this little message box, that means that your installer is done. So it'll ask you to either reboot or continue trying Mint. We want to get to our main Mint install by now, so let's just reboot. Once your device finishes rebooting, Linux Mint's quick start guide will show up. This basically just gives you a handful of options to configure to your liking. All of these are completely optional, but here are a few I personally like to set up. First off, desktop colors. These are basically just themes, with the default theme for Linux Mint being a hybrid theme of dark and light mode, using dark elements for your main desktop and light elements for applications. I personally prefer to switch to full dark mode for apps and desktop, but this is totally up to you. You might want light mode, you might be okay with the hybrid mode, your choice. You can also change your accent color for some highlights here and there, which I usually set to pink, which is my favorite color. Next up, Driver Manager. Depending on your device, this may be more or less important. For example, most NVIDIA graphics cards will require you to set up the correct drivers in Driver Manager. AMD graphics cards, however, and any integrated graphics such as the Intel Pentium N3710 in this laptop won't require any manual driver configuration. They should work just fine out of the box. It's one of the big benefits of Linux. Most distros come with all of your drivers pre-installed. Third, scroll down and check on Update Manager. You should change your download mirror to the one nearest to you because that will make your downloads much faster. And then you should check up and see what updates your device needs. On a fresh install, you're going to be needing a lot of updates most likely, so make sure you get all those installed before you continue. And last, but certainly not least, Software Manager. This is where you can download all additional software for Linux. You can get web browsers, you can get games, you can get utilities, photo editors, there's a whole variety of applications you can get here. If you need something, you can most likely find it here. Once you're all done with exploring the first steps menu, make sure to toggle show this dialog on startup to false. We don't need it running every single time we reboot the computer, this is a first quick setup guide, so no need to leave it running. And finally, to exit the startup guide, just click the X in the top right corner. And now you're done! You have a fully functioning install of Linux Mint to use. You can browse the web, install games, do some work, and so much more. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it. This was really fun. This was a very good opportunity for me to talk about Linux because I never get to talk about Linux. Yeah. To get started with installing Linux, you need to use, you, you, yeah.